All right, so we got ourselves a player. We can see him. That's amazing on its own, but he doesn't do anything. Like you hit play, and and that's your game right now. He's just he's just sitting there. It's it's pretty boring, right? This is uh this can't be it. So what do we do? In order for something to interact with the physics in Unity, Unity has pre-built physics. You don't have to use it, but you can use it. It makes your life easier. It's been pre-programmed. It's there. People have used it before. So we're going to use it for this game. Anytime that you want something to be able to interact with physics, anytime you want something to actually exist within the physics system of Unity, it has to have something called a rigid body. Right, so we have player connected here, just like before. Well, you know what it's called now. Actually, why don't you pause the video right here? You wanna, you wanna make sure it's the 2D version, but why don't you see if you can figure out how to add it to the player? The last video we talked about how you add components. So, over here, you hit this add component button right here. Anytime you're trying to add any kind of functionality to this object. The player object right here you always want to hit add component now if you write rigid body in here you'll see two of them come up you don't even have to spell it all out you'll see two of them rigid body rigid body 2d gotta remember unity is a 3d engine so the when it says rigid body it doesn't have anything after it that's that is for the 3d physics rigid body and they'll even like show the three axes on there if you look really close at that picture you see the z-axis x-axis y-axis where this one just has just two axes on it so anyways rigid body 2d click and ta -da, we suddenly have a rigid body on there now they have three different body types each one of them doing something a little bit different dynamic kin kinematic and static uh dynamic means that uh, this thing moves within gravity and all the other forces in the world kinematic means that uh, this thing does not move unless you move it and static means that this thing sits still no matter what that does not move okay so if i just hit play now you see how i have them in the air a little bit right to the he falls very slowly like a leaf but he he does fall right and that's all because we have it on the dynamic type right here the two things that we're really going to be using in this tutorial series is mass and gravity scale gravity scale is really going to be your friend for how much how fast and or how slow something falls so as you see it plummeted and i had a mass of one and a gravity scale of five this is definitely your main thing here right so if we have 0.5 here watch how slow this thing falls right so much slower so for now though we're not gonna really mess with any of that that's just for future videos um but why is it just going through the ground well, even though it has a rigid body on on it, it all it does is it only interacts with like the gravity system and and uh, a slowing down system and velocity. I mean, in order for it to collide with things, because you don't always need to deal with the physics system in order to collide, but it does interact with the colliders. So you can add a collider to this object. Collider, and I personally like the box collider 2D. You're on a 1 and 2D collider, and ta-da! Suddenly you have a box collider. Now don't mistake this little square right here, these blue dots, as having to do with that collider, that green thing around it. That is the shape of his body right now. Whatever hits that is hitting his body. It doesn't matter to the pictures right here. If it hits this green part right here, here, or here, it is hitting his body. So if you hit edit collider over here underneath box collider 2D, You'll get this thing with these little, let me turn off the background so that you can see it a little bit better. So add a collider and you see these little dots right here. You can actually mess with the size of the collider. So a little bit like that, a little bit like that. Notice I don't actually build it completely to the shape of the picture because you're not always going to be matching this up entirely. And do I really want his tail to count as part of his body when something hits it or something? You know, but the feet are pretty important because you want it to feel like he's landing correctly. All right. 
and then we're done. So there we go. Now that's the shape of his body. <laughs> I'll turn back on my background right here, which if you didn't know, anytime you uncheck one of these boxes, it makes that thing go away. That's for the entire game object. This will do it for the tile map itself. This will do it for the tile map render right there. I notice it says render on here, just like we did the sprite render on this right here on the player. Uh, yeah, render is one of those words that you just kind of learn as you're building things. It, it basically just means that it makes something appear on the screen. <coughs> well, that's really simplified, but we're going to go with it for now. Okay, so now that you've learned that, we hit play button and he falls from the sky and still nothing happens. Why did nothing still happen? Well, that would be because the foreground over here doesn't have any of those cool green lines, right? Like, you don't see nothing green on any of these objects over here. Not one of those platforms. That stinks, right? Well, if you add a component to this and you go to Tile Map Collider 2D, right here, Ta-da! All of a sudden, all the tiles have colliders on them. And if we hit play now, he'll fall, and boom, he collides with the tile map collider. Now, it might not look like it, but all these uh, tile map colliders actually have, like, they're, they're separate colliders right now. You see, there's, like, gaps, sort of. Like, not very, so narrow that you can't even really see them, but it creates more of a more physics that have to happen and also makes it so that things can potentially like slip through the cracks um so you can add a composite to this composite collider 2d and that will combine it all it'll automatically add this rigid body to it you want to make sure this says static meaning it doesn't move if, let me show you what happens if we don't do that Ta-da, the whole world's fallen with them, right? You don't want it to be affected by gravity or anything else. You just don't want it to move. So you hit static on that rigid body 2D. And it'll fall and land on it again. Now you want to make sure that this tile map collider 2D knows as you're being used by a uh, composite. Because right now it's still just a bunch of separate colliders. So you hit this button right here. Check mark. See? Big difference, right? And then, ta-da! You see how it becomes one big shape versus the... Uh, bunch of small shapes if I don't have that active let's see if I get rid of the tile map uh, you'll see how like the shapes stay there right so if I got rid of the render so mean that you don't see the image anymore you see how all those green squares are there separately if I hit use by a composite all the ones in between go away because these just become one big shapes when they're connected like that right hit tile map render so you see it again hit make our background reappear and boom. So it's not perfect, but we have gotten to the point where there is a world, the player can land on the world and actually interact with it now. We are on our way to making a game. Thank you, and I will see you next time.